All right, we're going to be getting right into it. Rivers versus Malarson, the other side of winner's semis. Winner of this going to be going up against Stefan in winner's finals. These two have a bit of a checkered set history, but as with many of the Jersey players who have been around since Smash 4, it isn't James's favor. So we'll see how Malarson adjusts going into this set. Yeah. And this is one of those matchups that it's it's going to be fundamentally different from how the, how it's been played before. I mean, this Diddy Kong is definitely storied in its utility and it, and uh, Diddy's uh, frequency in the use of uh, of rivers. But man, the speed of Mithra just being able to blow past so much of Diddy's uh, setup and pressure and just never give them time to adjust. Foresight not to mention and the edge guarding of Pyra. Yeah. There's a lot of tools that are natively strong for Larson and answers like that to an overcommitment by Rivers is a great way to start off this best of five. Absolutely, yeah. We see that hurt box shifting from Pyra up air really causing a problem for James there. Is this gonna be the stock? Yeah, it is just realizing that Malarson has to full drift in before pressing that up B. Unfortunate stuff. I like that uh, Marson has been really attentive to what side he's on of Diddy Kong. Like coming down, straight down with a lot of these neutral airs, almost treating it like a fuzzy in a lot of ways, where you can cross in between yes. at the, during the multi-hit. And it's it's been really it's been really interesting to watch as that use of pressure and the counterplay to banana toss. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing that we see um, Larson doing in terms of counterplay to banana toss is just playing deep outside of that Diddy Kong range. If he's not in there looking for those nares, he's not there. He's half a stage <laughs> away outside of the range of banana toss. When you have what is arguably one of the, what is definitely the best additional dash in the game and one of some of the best movement in the game, uh, period, in Mithra. Using that is just as important, though without a jump here, after getting caught by a with a ledge hop, that forward tilt, the activity on it, will stuff out Molarzen and give, James, uh, give Rivers back the lead. Yeah. This matchup can be a little scary for Pyramithra because, I mean, as we know, everyone always talks about how their only true weak point is off the stage. Um, but Diddy Kong, in particular, his tools for dealing with characters off stage are really hard for a character like Pyramithra who have to come in at that 45 degree angle from under the stage constantly or overcommit to what is essentially just a slow Fox Illusion slash Falco Fantastic. And a, a, one of those that you can dare as well pretty reliably. And Diddy Kong's got a particularly powerful set of edge guarding tools, though the Prominence Revolt doesn't take the stock and that dash attack won't either, but it was at a safe enough range in order for, for Malarson to find a punish. But James has been doing such a good job of making sure that when they take hit, they're taking it on the inside of stage and they've got the stage to work with. But the final hit of a Blazing End is just a little bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, it can get tricky trying to parry that move. I feel like that's what he was looking for and it didn't quite work out. Oh, then another ledge hop aerial coming out from Malarson has to be very careful with those. I know like, it can be kind of unexpected to take like, that huge a risk against with the character that does struggle a little bit off stage. But if you died for it before, make sure you don't die for it again. Yeah, exactly. Got to be careful. James holding shield for a little bit too long after these neutral layers. Can't really blame him, but Malarson going to take a lot because of it. Oh, spot dodges in front of Diddy Kong instead of punishing the grab, but does find the jabs. Good corner pressure here, but a good escape from the corner from Rivers. Does manage to get the up smash to connect in full there. I thought it was going to fail. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, he got the first and the third hit. That yeah. second one, I guess, was just a little bit too small. Just missing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. But he got the hit that he needed, and that's the one that counts. Yep. Uh, if there's anything that I really have been noticing from Malarson is not only some of the, the riskier uh, options that they've been taking, but the the almost non-willingness to anti-air with Pyro. We haven't seen Pyro up tilt at all of that game. Instead, trying to focus on like catching rolls with forward tilt and using that button in it as a means of his uh, ledge trapping character. Yes. When Rivers has just been jump, monkey flip, back to neutral. Yeah. 
And it, it really sucks because the reward for hitting, you know, a higher F tilt in the corner is amazing. But Diddy Kong, it, it, it's a very similar situation to um, the minecart thing with Steve, where if, if Ganon, uh, you know, gets the hit where you just break the minecart, Steve ends up center stage and isn't fast enough to make that a difficult decision for Steve to make. Uh, Diddy Kong does just kind of reset completely, and especially if he has monkey, uh, if he has banana in hand, you can't overcommit. You kind of have to stay in the corner and wait, and that's just a free situation for Diddy Kong. Makes things terrifying. We got to see firsthand Rivers' is prowess on ledge. Maybe even get to see it again. Oh, careful of those barrels. That Rivers, barrel. is, Rivers is pretty good at using those. They're somewhere. And I think they grew up on the other side of the stage. Either way, another Photon Edge. This is going to be a, okay, just a narrow to back air. But every little punish like that means so much. And the Z-Drop Banana to cover themselves on the other side. Rivers is... Putting on a clinic with this Diddy Kong, and I think, uh, as I remember correctly, Rivers is one of those players that, like, hey, these, I know Pyre and Mithra are like the new hotness, like that potential top three. They have so much going for them, but they're not all as good as they're cracked up to be. And I'm going to show you exactly why with a three stocks to one lead here. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's often been a practitioner of how these characters can struggle, especially off map. And I feel like within oh, that was dirty. Within the uh, framing of Diddy Kong, you know, it can seem a little bit easy to be like, all right, man, you play Diddy. Like, there's no way these characters are that bad. But he makes it look so difficult off map. There's forward airs in the corner. Gets dash attack, though. We really need to see Momarsen turn up the Jets with this Mithra a little bit. They're finally catching a jump with Mithra up kill and gets a solid combo off of it. 61 tempo needs to be in the favor of Momarsen as he goes for a huge down air and trying to recapture that momentum. Oh, no jump. Oh, this is going to be bad. Yeah, that's game. Yeah. All right. Getting into game three here. Rivers looking mighty comfortable. And I think it just goes to what you were saying earlier, Dre, where it's like Rivers is consistently, almost infallibly winning on ledge. Yes. And that level of surety that I can always recover against Pyra, I can always get off ledge against either of them, and I can make sure that regardless of if it's Mithra or Pyra, they can't make it back. Yeah. That's just such a threatening level of consistency that Rivers has demonstrated in these first two games. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, how many times has Malarson actually been allowed to reset neutral off the ledge, right? Like, even when James isn't completing the edge guard, he's often still in the corner and still terrified. It's a tough road to climb as we're seeing a different stage here. Uh, Hollow Bastion is a stage I see Morrison counterpick quite a number of times to. Uh, you have a Smashville-esque, you get that center platform. Oh, saving their jump. It's going to be bad, saving. yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, what to do? Much to do about nothing in there. Like, there is... Oh, the parry? double parry! I think that was automatic, but we respect anyways. <laughs> we love to see it. Oh, James looking for these precarious scenarios. I love the avoidance of the Chromadust there, but still ends up in the corner. But Larson, gonna have to really start maxing out. The wind punish with this dash attack, and the low with the landing hit, punishing nice. on the ledge. F tilt. Doesn't complete the edge guard. It can be really hard to punish Diddy Kong coming in from that straight angle, but that dash attack to corner him. But Larson looking really good this game. Pirate dash attack is like just enough range to be a consistent threat at um, at landing range. And man, Rivers has been going for these deep monkey flips while he's proven that he can recover time and time again. It's still something to worry about how much you're committing on ledge there. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I wanted that to be neutral air instead of back air coming out from Larson just to keep the keep the hits racking up and still send at that horizontal ankle. But I mean, we're back at neutral, and Rivers is just so good at navigating around Larson's pressure. Yeah, I understand the lack of willingness to overcommit in certain situations for sure, especially versus someone like Rivers, who uh, demonstrated not only the ability to escape disadvantage, but to get hard neutral resets. Like, absolutely insane neutral resets, almost to a level where it's unfair, especially making use of monkey flip and monkey flip pop gun cancel. 
Um, but you have to you have to make it count once you actually manage to get Diddy Kong in that corner. Stuck in shield for a moment there. Banana toss, but landing with Nair off the platform. Switching back to Mithra at these percents, you can start to expect things like up smash start to killing. And Great. That's, I mean, Mithra, Mithra finds an easier time landing hits, so Pyra did their job in the sense of getting enough damage to where Mithra can close out the stock. It's always got to be a tag team with these two, especially with uh, Diddy Kong being so flexible, but not reaching the platform in time, and that'll be a free forward smash for Rivers. Yeah, that was great patience, too, just kind of waiting, recognizing that the banana had him on one side, so he didn't have to rush punishing Mithra on the way down. Just analyze the drift and take things slow. Larson playing a lot better this game than he has before. Um, especially, I would say, his approach to the neutral is working out quite well. There are a lot of situations where James was just kind of whiffing things. But generally, I would say uh, Malarx is finding a lot more clean openings. Amazing switch. Not able to find a proper punish and just whiffing a couple key smash attacks. Not he able did to not think that was Monkey Flip. <laughs> <laughs> he did, when he parried it, he did not think that was Monkey Flip. Definitely thought that was forward air. Fell oh, no, off the platform from the banana. That's huge, but able to get back to ledge. Got to deal with banana and okay, bypass it entirely with the roll on. Will this pirate be able to do it? The Flame Nova, again, a great delay from yeah. Rivers. That was so good. Just once again, finding means of getting back on the stage quickly with Monkey Flip. Yep. And the fact that Marson, instead of choosing to deal with the banana with like a ledge drop catch or something of yep. the like, chose to bypass it completely with the roll on, which let it fall back into Rivers' hands and chase him down with it into center. Yeah, it's really scary stuff. I think, um, the most nerve-wracking thing about not picking up Banana on your way, or at least not presenting that as an option you're willing to take on the way, is that the Diddy Kong will often just run to the corner and pick that Banana right back up. Yeah. It's not a problem for them. And if they have the lead on you, it's so much scarier for you to be in that scenario, even if you do manage to find center stage again. And it's, a, and it's a really good job of showing just, while Pyra and Mithra are two devastating forces in the metagame, picked up by very many player, you don't have to fear them on the same level that you would, to use contemporary examples, uh, to uh, Smash 4 Bayonetta or yes. Brawl Meta Knight. They are very exploitable. They have obvious counterplay, and if you play slippery enough, not just a slippery character like Diddy Kong, but play slippery enough to where they can't pin you down, yes. then things get a whole lot more tedious and they are another one of those characters that can operate on soap bubble theory. Yeah. One, one touch and they're gone. Exactly. And especially, um, we see, like, dash attack in particular for Mithra. Someone's ability to play around that button really changes how that set is going to look. Oh, yeah. um, and we see James just kind of standing right outside of that burst range, just giving full respect to Mithra. And Nair as well. I mean, it's very easy to just um, shield all of Nair and actually continue going into... Uh, like looking for your pressure. Oh, we're, you're good. Uh, I, are we? Are we live? Oh. Okay. Uh, but, uh, sorry, lost my train of thought. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, that was a great set, right? James like, played outside of dash attack range really well and reacted to it very well, and also that was an incredible set. Yeah.